I remember. I can even remember the day. That day, 1701. I was a young fool. Entered the throne room with nothing but dreams of daring and a burning thirst for action. Still, her majesty was considerate. Listen to me. All I needed was a ship and someone to believe in. We followed the wind west, sailed with the dolphins. I often asked myself if I promised too much. When I boastfully filled Her Majesty's ears with the prospect of settling huge tracts of land. Many industrious hands went to work, built a prospering settlement from nothing. Then it happened. did more. The city shone as never before. Today, trade flourishes. Her Majesty is satisfied. It paid off. Back in 1700. Welcome! In this tutorial, we would like to familiarize you with the gameplay basics and build a small pioneer settlement. You have come to the New World by order of the Queen to settle new territory. Ah, it would seem that Her Majesty would like to have a word with you in person. Know that we have doubts about your success, but we will see how well you get on in making this island habitable. Don't be put off by Her Majesty's lofty demeanor. This lady may seem reserved, but she's not at all. Just have a look. She has already built a warehouse for you on the coast of this island. Prove to her that you can establish a small pioneer settlement in Goldfurt. First, you should have an overview of your island. Use the arrow keys or move the mouse to change the section of screen. Move the camera by using the arrow keys or by moving the mouse on the edge of the screen. The warehouse on the coast, marked here with the arrow, represents your trading office. It is the first building that can be built on any island and allows you to build more structures in the area around it. Equally important as a warehouse is the village center. It will be the bustling hub of your settlement Goldford. Now proceed to the construction menu to build it. Good! The construction menu is now open at the bottom of the screen. It shows all the buildings you can build. At first, the buildings for the Pioneer level are available, and more buildings will be added later in the game. Now, start by building the village to ease your entry into the... Excellent! You have just built your first building, an important milestone for your settlement. To settle the first pioneers on your island, you should build some houses in Goldford. In the construction menu, left click to select to build house. the house by left. Congratulations. Click. The first pioneers have already moved into this house. Your build more houses so that more pioneers can come and settle. When you have a total of six houses, Goldford will be large enough for the moment. Marvelous. You have created sufficient living space. Now pioneers will gradually come and settle down in the houses. 
the Queen has granted you a substantial seed capital. Have a look on the info bar in the top left corner of the screen. You can always view your current wealth here. Your current funds won't last forever. You must make a profit as quickly as possible. You can raise taxes to do this. The more people who live in your settlement, the more tax levies will automatically find their way into your city exchequer. In the info bar, you will see that 48 pioneers have now come to live in your settlement who will pay their taxes honestly. The green number under your wealth indicates your current balance. As the tax income is presently higher than the operating costs for your buildings, you are making a profit. Don't worry if you go into the red during the early stages of the game. This will level out during the later phase of the game. To view information about your settlement, you can select all the buildings in the world directly. We now want... Very good! You will see the village center menu displayed at the bottom of the screen. Each of your population civilization levels will be represented by a self-portrait. You can see the current level of satisfaction by the facial expression and background color of the portrait. Your pioneers are in a friendly mood at present. The satisfaction of your inhabitants depends on whether or not their needs are being fulfilled. Your pioneers are longing for a community, so you have already ensured this need is satisfied by building a village center. Food is also an important basic need of your population. The Queen has provided you with enough supplies to ensure that this need is satisfied for the time being. You can gain an accurate view of the stock level of your food supplies in the info bar on the top left. As your population will have a constant requirement for food, your reserve won't last forever, so ensure that you maintain a supply by producing food yourself. With the help of a fisherman's hut, you can provide for the population's food demands. The building can be situated on sandy coastal areas, like this one. The fisherman's hut requires a particular resource nearby, fishing grounds. You can see fishing grounds on the rippling water near the coast with a fish icon above it. If you move your mouse pointer over the icon, information will be displayed on the quantity of fish you will find here. Build a fisherman's hut on this sandy beach. Open the construction menu, fishing grounds that are within the, the fisherman area. immediately In goes this out. tutorial, very good. When you move the mouse pointer, congratulations. You have connected the fisherman's hut and the warehouse by a dirt road. The, market the food wagon. supply for your settlement Goldfurt is assured for now. You can observe your inhabitants. Congratulations. You have built a small pioneer settlement and have successfully completed this tutorial. The inhabitants of Goldfurt are satisfied and the Queen too has every reason to be proud of you. You can now repeat what you have just learned in a practice game if you like. Or Welcome. In the second tutorial, we will show you how you could upgrade your settlement to reach the next civilization level. The queen, at whose behest you have established a settlement here, is still not entirely convinced that your exploits will be a great success. Prove to her that on the contrary, you can lead your population to the settler level. In Goldford, the small settlement you start with, you will find everything your pioneers could possibly want. A village center, a warehouse and a fisherman's hut on the coast, as well as ample living space. Now it is worth creating the conditions to enable your inhabitants to progress to settlers. Building material is used for every building you construct. Wood is one of the most important building materials and at the start of the game will be required for all the buildings. The info bar in the top left corner indicates how much wood you currently have available. To ensure that you are suitably equipped to upgrade your settlement, a top priority is to establish a lumberjack's hut, which will supply you with wood for your buildings. To make your entry into the game easier, we will provide suitable construction sites. 
Later, you are free to choose where to position all the buildings. The lumberjack gets to work immediately. Now all he needs Excellent. is... Excellent. Wood production is in full swing, and goods are also being transported to the warehouse. The lumberjack fells trees in the wood. The cleared area around the lumberjack's hut indicates the area of influence in which he goes about his business. Trees are a self-renewing raw material and available in ample quantities on your island. The more trees that surround the lumberjack's hut, the more quickly wood production can proceed. In the lumberjack's hut menu at the bottom of the screen, you will see that the lumberjack processes the trees to produce wood and how much he has already produced. Up to five tons of wood can be stored in the building. When the internal warehouse is full, the lumberjack will stop his work for a while. The percentage indicates the lumberjack's level of productivity. The higher the productivity of a production facility, the more quickly the relevant goods will be manufactured. As you can see, the lumberjack is currently hard at work. We have much to do, and wood is immediately required in the initial phases of the game. Therefore, build a second lumberjack's hut to guarantee a supply. To maintain high productivity, also connect the two lumberjack's huts to the road network via a dirt road. The Select. wood supply is guaranteed. You now have plenty of time to attend to your population and check if they are satisfied. As you can see from the portrait in the village center menu, your pioneers are quite satisfied. All their needs, food and community, are adequately fulfilled. Now, another need has arisen. Cloth. Cloth already belongs to the needs of the next civilization level. If you supply it to your population, you will have satisfied one of the conditions required for them to become settlers. Wool can be processed to make cloth in a weaver's hut. The relevant building is now available to you in the construction menu. Open the construction menu and select a weaver's hut. The weaver's hut also needs a road connection to the warehouse so that the market wagons can pick up the cloth later. Excellent. Now have a look at the weaver's Looking hut. at the productivity display, you see that no cloth is currently being manufactured. The raw materials icon shows you the reason why. You do not have the wool required for it. You should remedy this situation quickly. You can manufacture wool for cloth production on a sheep farm, and you will find the relevant building in the construction menu. The first sheep are already grazing in the pasture. As the buildings are situated very close together, you don't need to build a dirt road this time. The weaver's hut sends a journeyman out, who after a while picks up the wool directly from the sheep farm. Sheep farms and weaver's huts form a production chain. Only the final production facility, in this case the weaver's hut, requires a road connection to pick up the goods. A weaver's hut normally operates at optimum capacity with two sheep farms. To produce enough wool for your weaver's You have taken care of wool production. Congratulations! Your weaver's hut is now being supplied with wool in sufficient quantities. Soon the first cloth will be ready. You again have a moment to devote to your population in As the need for cloth is now satisfied, your population satisfaction has increased again. Judging from the portrait, you see that this has put your pioneers in a euphoric mood. To ensure that your settlement can expand further and the population can later progress to become settlers, you should create more living space. To do this, build six houses near to the village center. Open the construction menu and build six houses on the construction site provided. Well done! New pioneers are already moving into your settlement. You will see in the info bar in the top left corner that the number of inhabitants is gradually increasing. Have another look at your village center. Select the village center. Once the new inhabitants have moved in, a fourth need will now be displayed in the village center menu. A faith. chapel can satisfy your population's need for faith. To enable all Goldfurt's inhabitants to benefit from it, you should construct the building in close proximity to the houses. 
open the construction menu and select Very good. The first inhabitants are already going to pray in the new chapel. You must be interested The portrait of every civilization level that lives in this house appears in the house menu. The facial expression and background color reflect their satisfaction. Beside it is shown which needs the inhabitants of the house have and if they are being fulfilled. As you can see, the needs for food, community, cloth and faith are being satisfied. You have already fulfilled all the conditions required for a level increase. Look, the population is already starting to upgrade their pioneer houses to settler houses. The Queen will be delighted. You have now achieved your first success truly worthy of respect. Carry on. Your village centre has also changed with the level increase. The square and the statue are shining with a new brilliance and the market stalls have been upgraded. That will please the people of Goldfurt. Congratulations. You have enabled your population to advance to settlers and you have therefore successfully completed this tutorial. The inhabitants of Goldfurt praise you in recognition of your services. You can now choose to repeat what you have just learned Welcome. In the third tutorial, we will show you how you can extend your construction area and expand your settlement. You will also learn more about your population's needs and how you can satisfy them. This will further enhance your reputation with the Queen. Before too long, the first settlers have moved into your small settlement, Goldfurt. All their needs are satisfied and the population is going about its business. But what's this? You can see your current wood supplies in the info bar in the top left corner. Your lumberjacks have been hard at work felling trees. With the 40 tons which are now in your warehouse, the current storage capacity of the island-wide warehouse has been reached. An exclamation mark has also appeared over the lumberjacks' huts. This appears if the production facility is not operating correctly. You will find out what is wrong by moving your mouse pointer over the icon. As there is no Although the lumberjack has nothing to do, the operating costs for the building are still being withdrawn from your wealth. Stop wood production to reduce the operating costs. As all the warehouses are full to bursting with Very good. Both lumberjacks have been put on hold for now and are taking a little nap in the sun. And you are looking after the city exchequer. After your population has upgraded to settlers, new buildings have been added in the construction menu. Go ahead, have a look at them. Here you will see all the settler buildings currently available to you. Besides wood, another building material will be required for the new buildings. Bricks. After the level increase, the relevant icon is added to the info list. As the supplies from Her Majesty contain no bricks, you will have to organize brick production yourself, for which you will need a clay pit and a brickworks. The clay pit must be situated directly on a clay deposit. There, a short distance away from your settlement, up there to is. now, all the buildings you have built were located within the construction area of your warehouse. However, the clay pit mining site is outside this area. To enable you to build the clay pit, you must therefore first extend your construction area. To enlarge your construction area, you can build market buildings. The market buildings function in the same way as your warehouse. They increase your storage capacity and they have their own market wagons for picking up goods. However, in contrast to the warehouse, they are built inland and not on the coast. Extend your construction area using the market building to enable you to exploit the clay pit. As you have already had some practice in constructing buildings, contrary to the previous tutorials, the market building on your mouse pointer appears in a colored circle. Congratulations! You have built the market building on a suitable spot. 
The clay pit now lies within your settlement area, and you can now construct the buildings required for producing bricks. The icon over the mining site for the clay pit indicates inexhaustible raw material deposits. For the moment, it will suffice to tap an unlimited deposit using the clay pit, and this can later be fully exploited by the appropriate research. You can obtain information on raw material deposits by moving your mouse pointer over the icon. Certain production facilities, like the clay pit, can only be built directly on the relevant raw material deposits. Now you need a brickworks which, combined with the clay pit, forms a production chain to manufacture. The brickworks and the market building must be connected by a dirt road so that the goods can be picked up. Switch to the Pioneer Good. Building. Brick production is in full swing. It won't be long before the market wagons can pick up the first bricks. If you have constructed a building on an unsuitable site, or if it is no longer required, you can demolish it at any time. To do this, activate Demolish Mode using the button on the bottom left of the minimap. When you activate Demolish Mode, you can left-click to remove the building from the game world. In the continuous game and at a low level of difficulty, the construction costs will be reimbursed in full when a building is demolished. You have not yet attended to the needs of your population since they advanced to settlers. You should check your island satisfaction. Select in the village center, you will see that your settlers would now like some alcohol. More conditions must be fulfilled to enable your settlers to progress to citizens, and alcohol is one of them. The type of plants that can be cultivated on an island can be viewed on the fertility display in the top right corner of the screen. Alcohol can be produced from hops or sugar cane. Unfortunately, neither of these will flourish on your island. For the first time since your settlement was established, the problem has arisen whereby you cannot produce a particular item of goods on your island. The situation will always arise whereby certain goods cannot be produced on a particular island. But this poses no great cause for concern. Indeed, you cannot produce alcohol yourself, but in the warehouse you can advertise the fact that you want to purchase it. Select your warehouse. A warehouse menu is now open at the bottom of the screen. It is divided into two parts. You now find yourself directly in the warehouse. It displays all the goods that are available on your island and provides an overview of the income and expenditure relating to this settlement. You can open the Passive Trading menu on the second tab. Excellent. Well done. Alcohol is now displayed in the first warehouse. The number under the goods icon represents the quantity of goods in tons that you must purchase or sell. The price per ton in gold coins is shown above the warehouse. You should purchase at least five to 10 tons to supply a small settler village like Goldfurt with alcohol. Left, you must now wait until someone comes along and sells you the goods you want. One of your best trading partners is the free trader. He drops by regularly to see if you would like to purchase or sell any goods. That's lucky, the ship has just arrived in your harbor. The business we do makes the long journeys worthwhile. Marvellous! Your first trade was a great success. However, the purchase wasn't exactly cheap, and you will require more alcohol before too long. You should look for other ways to provide alcohol for your population. It is now time to find out if one of the other islands in the world is suitable for cultivating hops or sugar cane. We are pleased at your progress. Take this ship as a token of our recognition. Wonderful! The Queen's gift has come just at the right moment. You can use the new ship to search for an island where you can produce alcohol for your population. We would like to accompany you on this mission in the next tutorial. You are now equipped with all the information you need to embark solo into the world in a continuous play game. 
If you would prefer to play a Welcome. You are already well equipped to build a settlement in the world. In the fourth and last tutorial, we want to show you how to settle new islands. You will also establish a trading route to supply your population with goods and bring you to the prominent attention of the Queen. The inhabitants of your settlement have expressed a need for alcohol. However, you cannot yet build the necessary production facilities on your island as your island does not have the required fertility for hops or sugarcane. In addition, it will be expensive to purchase it regularly from the free trader. So, let's look at some alternatives. As luck would have it, the Queen has placed one of her own ships at your disposal, the Neptune. In the ship menu, you can check the Neptune's current cargo. The ship currently has no goods on board. To load the ship, it must anchor directly in front of the settlement's warehouse. You are now in the loading menu. From here, you can load goods from the warehouse. You can close the goods. Open. Excellent. This ship is now laden and you can set sail on your journey. Have a look at the mini-map in the left corner of the screen. This provides an overview of the island world and shows you all the areas which you have already explored. The yellow colouring indicates every area on your island that you have already settled. It is time to embark on a maiden voyage. You can right-click on the ship directly on the minimap to issue a movement order. The destination of your first trip is already marked there. Steer the ship by right-clicking on the minimap at the position indicated, shown by a red circle. Congratulations! You have discovered a new island at the end of your You trip. are lucky! As you can see from the fertility display at the top of the screen, this island is ideally suited for cultivating sugarcane. You can establish your alcohol production here. You now only have to acquire the island. When you settle a new island, you must always build a warehouse first. It must be built right on the coast. Here. Once you have reached an island's coast, and have enough building Good. Material. Now that the warehouse is built, you have taken the first step in settling a new island. Once built, the remaining building materials will be automatically loaded into the warehouse of your new settlement, Ranzingen. As you are not building an entire settlement in Ranzingen, but only want to build production facilities for manufacturing goods, you do not require a village center or houses you can immediately start building your alcohol production. You will also find a distillery among the settlers' buildings in the construction menu, where sugarcane can be distilled to produce alcohol. Link the distillery to the warehouse by a dirt road so that the market wagons... Good. Now you only need sugarcane plantations to keep the distillery supplied. With two plantations within its area of influence, the distillery... Excellent. The distillery will soon send its journeymen out to pick up the sugar cane from the plantations and rum will then be distilled from it. You must not make your settlers wait to load the alcohol in the warehouse open. Excellent! As the alcohol is now aboard the Neptune, you can now transport the alcohol to Goldford. To do this, sail your ship directly in front of your warehouse the spot is again marked on the minimap. Right click on the minimap to steer the ship to the position indicated. After an uneventful crossing, you have now arrived in your home port and can unload. It the is now time. Congratulations! The alcohol. As you can see from the display, the shipment will gradually satisfy the need for alcohol. You've done a good job. However, the alcohol you have just delivered will not last forever, and you will soon have to establish a supply. You won't always have time to attend to this personally. So, to facilitate the transport between the islands, you must create a trading route. You can create trading routes using the strategy map 
which you will find on the right edge of the minimap. Open the strategy the map. map is the reduced version of the entire game world on which you will see marked your two warehouses and your ship. You can create a new route using the option Create Trading Route on the left corner of the map. First, set the warehouse on the production island Ranzingen. Now establish your target hub. Next, establish which item of goods should now be transported. Excellent. Well Fantastic. Done. Now all you have to do is activate the route. Congratulations. Your trading route is now complete and the Neptune has already set sail towards Ranzingen. Alcohol will now be delivered to Goldfurt automatically. Click the flashing button to close the strategy map. With the opening up of your first trading route, you have successfully mastered the fourth and last tutorial. Your population is overjoyed at your marvellous achievements, and neither have your early successes escaped the notice of the Queen. We really would not have expected this. You are quite a surprise. You have now learnt everything you need to know to take fate into your own hands in the world. If you would prefer to practice once again, you can repeat this tutorial or start